Welcome to Screw the Commute, the entrepreneurial podcast dedicated to getting you out of the car and into the money with your host, lifelong entrepreneur and multimillionaire, Tom Antion. Hey, everybody, it's Tom here with episode 357 of Screw the Commute podcast. We are in the middle of sex week and in women in power week, and I have two uh, a mom and daughter team on this week. Uh, mom was on episode 356. That was Wednesday. Uh, it was Dr. Janet Hall. And uh, her lovely daughter is on here today uh, to give you a little different perspective on what we talked about. Her name is Ella Hall. And yeah, it's a, she's one of those women you just look at her and you got to take a cold shower. So she's been giving me hell about that. But uh, too bad. Uh, <laughs> she's too many miles away for me to fight with her. Hope you didn't forget to take advantage of the free ebook I give away. It's called How to Automate Your Business. It's allowed me to handle up to 150,000 customers or excuse me, subscribers and 40,000 customers without pulling my hair out. And we we actually figured it out a couple of years ago. Just one of the tips in this book has saved me seven and a half million keystrokes. It allows me to steal customers from people because I take care of people so lightning fast, they don't want to go anywhere else. So check it out. It's screwthecommute.com slash automate free. Screwthecommute.com slash automate free. You can download it. And while you're at it, get a copy of our podcast app at screwthecommute.com slash app. That's A-P-P, where you can put us on your cell phone and tablet. It does all kinds of cool things. And we have uh, videos and screen captures to show you how to use it. All right. Now, people are still crying the blues. And I, I know there's a lot of really bad stuff happening in the world with this pandemic. And I, I really feel for all the people that have been sick and have lost loved ones. And I totally get that. It just so happens, though, that my job is to help you financially and to stay out of trouble when bad things happen in the world. And that's been my mission for 26 years since the internet started in 1994. So 12 years ago, I created a school. It's the only licensed, dedicated internet marketing school in the country, certified to operate by CHEV, the State Council on Higher Education in Virginia, USA. And you don't have to be in Virginia, though, to attend. It's distance learning, and it's good distance learning, not like what they're trying to do to little kids, you know, nowadays. It's very tough on the little ones, but you can be working some other job, do this in the evening, in the mornings, anytime you want, and it's hardcore skills that are needed by every business on earth. So it's just very powerful, and we've got people making money even a month into the school. So Check that out at imtcva.org, and I'll tell you a little later about how you can get a full scholarship if you're in my mentor program. All right, let's get to the main event. Ella Hall is a leading transformation success coach and pleasure power expert. She supports busy men and women to transform their ordinary everyday lives by educating and empowering them with tools to claim their mastery, to live the extraordinary life that is their birthright. And her catchphrase is from the bedroom to the boardroom and beyond. Ella, are you ready to screw the commute? Yes, I can't <laughs> wait. You <laughs> can't wait to screw the commute. Well, boy, it's so great to meet you. I've known your mother for a long, long time. And uh, she, of course, speaks highly of you. But, you know, as you look into your background, uh, there's no uh, it's, it's obvious why she would be so proud of you with all you've accomplished. But tell everybody really what you're doing nowadays. Well, it's just such a pleasure to meet you as well. And um, I'm really honored to be here and and, you know, to serve you and your audience um, basically, wait a minute. You're not I, allowed. You're not allowed to talk in that low, sexy Marilyn Monroe voice on this show. <laughs> <laughs> right, is you doing that on purpose, or is that just oozing out of you? It's oozing. <laughs> oh man, I knew Don't this worry. was going to be cold shower time. Don't worry, I'm just the right amount of bogan, so it all <laughs> evens out. This is this is what I was about to say. Amount so of what? Bogan? Bogan. Bogan is a very Aussie 
colloquial term and it just means like rough as guts, eh, mate? Oh. Just the right amount of, you know, this is where the pleasure power comes in, that beautiful dynamic of light and shadow, you know? So you got to, you, we're all of it. So let's embrace all of it. So a and bogan. So I, uh, I got to like, try to be better at boganing. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure in, in an American term, you probably have just that right amount of bogan in you because I connected straight away okay. <laughs> and it takes one to know one. <laughs> so what I was going to say is, yeah, there's two things, Tom, that turn me on more than anything oh, no. on this planet. Okay. One is business. And you could look at that as kind of like that more masculine you know, let's get shit done, um, clear action plan, make it happen, uh, really, you know, just inspired, take some full action and, you know, and get a result. And then the other thing that turns me on more than anything is energy. And you could look at that as more of the feminine, that kind of creativity, the juiciness, the inspiration, the um, flow, you know. So one's kind of like intention and the other one's kind of flow. And when they come together, um, like busy people like me, I was stuck in my head for years and years and I deal with, you know, the busy people of the world who are kind of stuck in their heads, you know, when they can come out of their heads and reconnect to that intrinsic wisdom that lives in the body and they can start to connect things like their sex center, which is all about that drive. It's more the masculine center to their heart, which is more that feminine energy, that creativity, that openness, that connection. You know, when these two centers come together, we are literally in our power, in presence, in pleasure, and we're able to take inspired action and create abundance in all areas of our life, from the bedroom to the boardroom and beyond, as you said. It is so, a catchphrase. So if I boiled that down, I'm supposed to um, try to get more head? Is that what it just... <laughs> 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 we need to come out of the head a lot of my oh. clients are really stuck in their head oh, and I, I, oh. got, I got what you mean but yes it's, <laughs> the head is the software we need to start to look at that as the servant not the master and when people who are especially in business can start to really master that success mindset and then start directing the mind but they're also listening to the deeper inner wisdom, the subtle feeling body, because that gets neglected a lot in the old business model. It was all about mental intelligence. And more recently, you know, people have come on board with, you know, people like Brene Brown have introduced to the world of business, hey, there's this thing called emotional intelligence. And, you know, vulnerability in business is actually a commodity. It's really essential to innovation and inspiration and being able to communicate effectively and all of that sort of thing. But what about intuitive intelligence? That's kind of what I bring to the table. I start to bring it in holistically. So you're using your mind, you're using the power of your body, and you're also using this incredible intuitive compass to help navigate your way through life, love, and business. Now you've so been making, you've everything. made a business of this. I mean, uh, has that been your whole adult career? Did you, did you ever have a job before that? Yeah, I love that. Did I ever have a job? Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I look at a job, um, you know, because I, I do what I love and love what I do. Mm -hmm. So for me, I never work a day in my life. I'm just being of service, being on path and really, on my soul's mission, right. And vision and just doing the next most obvious thing now. But I guess if I look back, you know, um, in 2007 was my last kind of employed role where I was managing a martial arts Academy in Melbourne. Wow. And it was, yeah, it was awesome. Are you a I martial artist it. yourself or you were just doing no, the business part? No, this part. is the cool bit. I was the friendliest door bitch in Melbourne. There's the bogan <laughs> door coming bitch. out, right? Is that what it's called? Yeah. That's it a bouncer a really or what? <laughs> kind of like, well, well, I was the manager but I was everything. So I was the number one salesperson. There were no, there, like I trained up other salespeople, but I was the predominant salesperson. I managed the academy. I basically said to the two boys that ran it, you guys go and be on the mats doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu, which is what your passion is. And let me have the autonomy to work this part of your business and make it fucking successful. And <laughs> I grew the business by 400% over six years that I worked there until I started getting headhunted by other health and wellness industries in Melbourne going, please help us grow. We, we, you know, we're startups. We want, we want to expand, you know, because I didn't just build the business successfully. I built an incredible culture. And that's where the friendliest door bitch kind of uh, identity came in because I was known, I was like a small fish, sorry, a big fish in a small pond. You know, I was, 
Um, my name then was Pam. You know, I was born Pamela and then changed my name to Ella. Oh, I didn't um, know that. as I evolved. Yeah. So I was Pam at Dominance and that was my identity. And, um, you know, I was rocking it out. But this was the thing, Tom, on the outside, everything looked amazing, right? After six years, I'd really grown the business. I should have been perfect. I was earning all the money I could earn, but I'd hit my cap and I felt so stuck. I was not juicy anymore. I'd lost my mojo. I was just burnt out from the hustle and the grind. Um, I wasn't feeling appreciated. I didn't feel inspired anymore. Every day I got up, look, I'd started to turn to really unhealthy coping strategies to kind of just exist. I wasn't living. And that's when I say I help people change their ordinary everyday lives, that the, the kind of just autopilot to the extraordinary orgasmic life that is their birthright. And you can have an orgasmic business. You can have an orgasmic relationship. You know, you can feel orgasmic all the time. And it wasn't until I got brave and left that identity and went out um, helping other businesses to grow. But then I realized, oh my God, it's the people that are, are the extension. The business is the extension of the person. And the person's only as good as their own programming, conditioning, the stories, the rules, the belief systems, the unhealthy patterns, all of that stuff that they have running. So I was like, oh, my God, no one's clear here. They don't have a clear vision. No one's on purpose. They don't have that beautiful feeling in their body. It's like, I want to make money. There's got to be a bigger driving force. So how did you transition to your own business? Did you have money saved up? Did you just quit or did you start taking uh, consulting clients? How did you transition? Yeah, I started taking the consulting clients. So as I said, you know, I wasn't dry. I, I wasn't growing in that industry of the martial arts academy anymore. I was literally, I had outgrown it. And it was so uncomfortable to stay in a position that doesn't fit anymore. It's like now, you know, with COVID, it's the way I say it is the universe is squeezing people like tubes of toothpaste to get into alignment with what they're really meant to be doing now. Like if we don't grow, we die. So I'd, I'd grown all I could grow and I was dying there. So then I started getting headhunted and I was going into the other businesses and I realized, oh my God, there's no clear vision. There's no clear purpose. There's no clarity with communication, you know, um, and there's no empowerment. Like these people aren't in personally empowered. They're all busy. They're, they're doing so much in their heads, but not much is getting done. There's no clear action plan. So I was like, you know what, for things to change first, I must change. I, I teach my own medicine, Tom. So I was like, okay, I need to leave this industry of the head stuff, the doing stuff, um, the get shit done stuff, the build the business, but on what foundation are they building on? You know? So I was like, I need to go and create that beautiful solid foundation for myself. And that's when I left the head stuff and went into full mind, body, emotion, energy, threw myself into the world of coaching, sacred sexuality, Tantra. And that was the awakening for me. That was where all of that old programming that had felt like cement around my own ankles just started to move and it moved. It wasn't comfortable all the time, but fuck me, it felt really amazing because the majority of the time I was in my pleasure. You know, now, is I this something shifting. you could sell to corporations? Like I was very surprised your mother said she spoke to the million dollar round table which is a big deal on the topic yeah. of sex. And uh, yeah. it doesn't seem like it's a stray, kind of a corporate topic. Yeah, well, it's not about sex. That's actually the biggest myth that I love to bust about things like Tantra. So I don't teach traditional Tantra. I'm not someone who believes in rules. I believe in fantastic education. More educated we are, like Knowledge is power, clarity is power amplified. So when we have the clarity and, and the education, we can then make better decisions to support us in every area of our lives, right? So when we talk about Tantra, I use the four core principles of Tantra, which are intention and presence, breath, sound, and movement. You know, these things um, channel into everything we do. They help us really come out of the tornado of life and find our own eye in the center of the storm. Now, when an individual or look at it as a holistic business, all the individuals within it are in their own 
space, they're clear, they're centered, they're grounded, they're not reactive, they're able to respond, you are going to have the most incredible, um, you know, flow in all areas of that business. It's structured, you know, that kind of thing. Um, I hope that made sense. Can you give me the four <laughs> things again? I got sound and movement, but what were the first two? Okay, so the, the first key of Tantra is intention and presence. I put them together because the intention is like the the vision, like the I choose to intend that I'm going to come into any practice. So um, put it this way, the Tantrics believed that there were people living in ordinary everyday lives. And these were the people who were the busy people of the world. They were just going on autopilot, right? They're just existing nine to five kind of existence. Then they also looked at the more kind of spiritual people that were living a transcendent life. And they were the monks in the monasteries and the nuns and the little guru sitting on top of a mountain going, nung, 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 nung. yeah. <laughs> and they were like, well, we don't really want to just lock ourselves away from the world, but we don't just want to exist in the world either. We want to live an extraordinary life where we're in the world, but we're not of the world. And that's where these principles of Tantra came into play. So the Tantrics started to practice with these four core principles and they noticed that they were so much more present in their life. Like they could feel everything. They were connected to everything. All of a sudden their pleasure was just bubbling up. They, they had longevity of life. Their health was improving. Like, you know, they were able to enter a transcendent state, but being in the nine to five. And that to me is an orgasmic life. That to me is an orgasmic business. And when we can live a life where we're able to just access through these four simple tools, right? That's why I say tools to claim your mastery because they put you back in touch with your innate mastery. The things that you and your soul and your body came to this planet with beyond someone having to teach you, they're there for everyone, but we need to remember, realign, and re-empower ourselves with that beautiful, unique pleasure, power, and the abundance that can flow from that place of feeling integrated and aligned. All right. So back to my original question: How do you how do you teach this to people? I mean, is it in the form of a seminar or one on one, or do like I said, do corporations buy this kind of stuff? So corporations in the past, when I've gone into corporations, it's been more along the lines of, okay, let's talk vision, purpose, clarity, empowerment. Mm -hmm. you, you meet people with where they're at and then you actually give them what they need. And that's the beautiful thing. So people can come into me from all different types of channels. Predominantly, I've been doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching over the years. Like through COVID, I have just had to like basically right. change the way I've been doing things. I used to offer a lot of tantric body work to give people an embodied experience of this stuff. I don't need to do that anymore. Um, the ability to activate this within people is innate within me. And, and it's just waking it up inside of them through um, coming on either a group session, doing a one-on-one, -on -one, um, buying one of my programs online. Like it's really the possibilities of working with me are, are endless and they're going to be more and more and more prevalent as we uh, go forward. All right. Now, <clears throat> now your mom said you got to ask this question to Ella because she'll, she'll explain it better. Than <laughs> so okay. when we hear, I won't say we, I'll just say me. When I hear the word tantric sex, it kind of reminds me, are you familiar with Reiki? Yes. Okay. You said yes. Like, oh, of course, like a big dummy. Why? Well, of course mm -hmm. I'm not <laughs> a Reiki. Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've i made a lot of jokes about Reiki in that. Have you? To, yeah, because I live in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and there's a big um, element of folks in here that they, they have courses like you can take a weekend course and become mm -hmm. a Reiki master. Well, mm -hmm. to me, I'm a hardcore business guy. You don't master anything in the weekend, okay? So the term master applies to people that have done years of work in their field, you know? So so I'm not. I'm a little skeptical about that. But then I said, oh, you ought to have a Reiki car wash, you know, see how that goes, mm -hmm. or Reiki haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> you know, see. Yeah. So, so the reason I bring that up is because you see somebody saying, yes, uh, we love tantric sex. Is there mm -hmm. touching involved? Is is it just uh, like a Reiki experience and a uh, a surreal experience? Is there actually orgasms for both parties and 
and touching and all that, or can it be that? Okay, so what you're asking is a really cool question. Okay, it's very valid. This is what I love to educate people about because we are more than just our mind. You know that, right? Yep. We're more than just our body. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we also have emotions and we have energy and we're all four bodies at the same time. So what I love about Tantra, like Reiki is predominantly using energy. Okay. And everything is energy emotion. It's just vibrating at different kind of frequencies. So this table that I'm sitting at right now, that's just all different particles that are vibrating at a certain frequency that make it dense. Yeah. But Our it doesn't work too good for washing energy. your car. Hey, it doesn't, it, it still doesn't work too well for washing your car. Is energy right I no mean, but but there's an intention behind everything you know and energy was the first inspiration for the person who got that idea to create the car wash right so you've got to kind of it's not so just cut and dry you gotta it's not so linear that's a very head thing you just said to me and we're more than our head <laughs> right so what i'm hearing you say is i don't i don't relate to just the heart stuff ella because this, this is my this is my clients, right? So mm -hmm. one client comes in and they're stuck in their head. And that is they're very linear, they're um, very practical and logical. Yeah, that's great. Like, and we need that on the planet. But you know and I know that the planet's not just made up of the logic and there's stuff we don't know, there's stuff we can't understand, there's stuff that we can feel, but we can't explain. And that stuff is just as important and potent as the stuff that is tangible and physical. And my my love and my gift is to help people marry the non-physical to the physical, the conceptual to the tangible. And when they've come together, okay, so in Tantra, I can touch you without touching you because my intention is that I am touching you with my breath. I am touching you with my eyes. I am touching you with my energy. And you will feel that if you are open to it. I have clients all over the world, Tom, that have had complete orgasmic shifts in their mentality, in their expansiveness. You know, like I will take people through a meditation and their whole body will be vibrating. And they're like, what the fuck are you doing to me? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm not doing anything. You're doing it to yourself. That's the beautiful thing about Tantra when we're seriously present within ourselves and we start to look not through the eyes of the head, but through the eyes of that deeper inner wisdom, that presence, the heart stuff. Right, and we're grounded in our base, which is that beautiful grounding. Then we can really start to both give and receive energy in a new way, and intention, and thought, and you know, um, creativity and inspiration. Like so much can be birthed from this, and it's not always easy to understand. But I say to people, Tom, you won't understand what I do until you have an embodied experience of it. Because for me to explain what Tantra is, it's like explaining the color red to someone who's got a blindfold on, who's never seen red before. And until you choose to take that blindfold off for yourself and actually see the color red and have your own interpretation of it, you know, you're going to stay blind. Okay. It's so here's, here's, I got explain. a caveman question for it. Go for right, linear, linear, uh, all head caveman question for you. Bring it. Okay. I get a lot of stuff done. Very high achiever in all the stuff that you mentioned before, you know, practical, yes, get yes. it done. Right. So Absolutely. you're, uh, it seems to me you're saying I could improve my life if I added, started adding some of the things you're talking about. Uh, is that improve a fair? Improve your life, not just in business, but from the right. bedroom to the boardroom, to every area of your life. You take you into every area of your life. If one area is suffering, the whole will suffer. Tom, I've worked with millionaires who come to me and go, Ella, I live in the valley of abundance, but inside I am the desert. Now, you tell me, Tom, what's wrong with that picture? No, I, I get that. They've worked, I... they've got it all, they've, you know, got the trophy wife, they've, you know, they should on the outside, it looks fucking perfect. But on the inside, they are dry, they are depleted, they feel like you know, just burnt out and they're resentful and often they're experiencing issues in the bedroom. This is, this is showing up on a physiological level now, right? It's not just their head. They're, they're, they're stressed out. They're burnt out. They're fried. And they come to me and they're like, and now I'm impotent. Now I can't get it up. Now I'm not even interested in sex. It's, it affects them. And the women, the women that come to me that are like, 
overgivers, people pleasers, high achievers, perfectionists, you know, so giving from an empty tank. This stuff is the full life force that replenishes the busy person. It's I teach self is not selfish. All right. You've got to feed all the parts of you and then you're able to give from a full place and everything in your life benefits from that. Your business, you're more creative, you're more clear, you're able to channel channel that sexual energy, which is the most potent and powerful of all the energies. How many guys do you think you know, Tom, out there in the world, high achievers, doctors, lawyers, you name it, like the IT guys, all oh, the IT guys are great because they're so stuck in their head. They're on a computer 24-7. Half of them are addicted to porn, right? They're giving, they're depleting themselves of life force energy. You know, they're distracted. They're not present. So when they go out into the real world, their connections are not deep. They're not able to have a deep connection to themselves. I, I totally sense? agree with that. Now, I was only yeah. halfway through my question a couple of minutes Sorry. ago. Sorry, <laughs> okay. I'm passionate. <laughs> <laughs> I know. All right, so, so I'm saying, okay, I got this whole side worth of high achiever, get stuff done practical that you you mm -hmm. talked about earlier. But um, if you were all the way to the, uh, uh, let's, let's just say I'm a fanatic on that side of the world, okay? Yeah. If you were a fanatic on the other side of the world, your side of the world you're talking to, but didn't have my side at all, would that be a bad thing? Okay, so back to my experience of how I started working for myself. So here I come from the whole side that you're talking about, the head stuff. Mm -hmm. I was smashing it in business. I was pushing, I was hustling, I was selling, and I loved it. I have a lot of masculine energy. I call that the masculine, right? It's linear, it's get shit done. It's so important and it's awesome. And it's a creative force, right? So then I left that side of the world and I went into the full embodiment side. This is a great question, Tom. <laughs> so when I went into the full embodiment side, I was also met with all of this crap because I was working now with some people that were all creative with no structure. Right, right. All flow with no nothing to see, hold it. See, in my world, I get people, you know, I, I kind of avoid holistic yeah. healthcare practitioners because – no matter what I do, they just want to do their beautiful work. And I love that. But then mm, no. nobody hears you about it because they don't have any of the marketing, you know, so yeah. it seems that a you balance need... is better. Absolutely. Well, this that's what I help people do is integrate mm -hmm. both because both have strengths and both have weaknesses. So I've lived both. I've gone from one extreme to the other and I felt so unmet, unsatisfied. I was working with people that couldn't organize themselves out of a paper bag. One, one of the um, questions that I, I saw uh, that you can sometimes ask people is, you know, have you ever had, you know, has anyone kind of ever screwed you in business? Mm -hmm. And I felt screwed in the kind of more practical business, health and wellness arena, you know, building businesses. I got screwed there. You know, I wasn't appreciated. I was, you know, that people still weren't worked out there. And then I went over to the other world and I'm like, fuck me. Like, where do I fit? I don't fit over there. I don't fit over there. So I had to go off and go, I need to create something that is integrated and holistic that can actually hold space for the get shit done. So I call that, let's call the masculine energy, just to give you a metaphor, the mountain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the feminine energy, that beautiful, creative flowing, you know, they all want to do their beautiful work and share their gifts and blah, blah, blah. And that's awesome as well. We need that. That's the river. Yeah. So let's have a look without, without her, without the, the feminine, the masculine is a dry mountain. He's barren. He's dry. He's not fertile. Nothing's really growing there. And it's just feeling a bit. Ugh. Now, if you look at the, the flow, the creative, the water side without a mountain to hold it, what is it? It could be a tsunami. It's a mess. It's an emotional, ah, you mm -hmm. know, like nothing's going to get done. But when you marry them, when they come together, the mountain meets the river, they are now formidable. They're a formidable force together. She has direction. So it's intention meets flow. It's less hustle. You're still absolutely getting shit done, but you're doing it with more grace and ease. And this is what I love to do for people, get them out of their own way so they can get to marry those two elements within themselves and really start to generate some major success in their everyday lives. 
and it will relate from the physical to the mental, the emotional and the energetic or spiritual if you want to go there. Amazing, amazing work. Wow, I'll tell you. So you have um, uh, something for our folks, right? Yeah, well, everybody that I speak to in America is really curious about Tantra. And Tantra really was, for me, the handbrake that took the Ferrari that is my life into the next stratosphere. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's where I suggest everyone start. Just educate yourself. I've got uh, an amazing audio series. I designed it specifically for the busy people of the world. Each audio is short, sharp. It's packed full of inspiration, information, really clear very simple and easy to understand um, points about and, and embodied experiences. So you can have a taste of it for yourself. So it starts off with the first five audios of kind of like a welcome. Who am I? What is pleasure power? What is Tantra? And what is sacred sexuality? Because my own brand of magic is not Tantra, what I teach, but here's, here's what they are. Then it's like, how can Tantra help him? How can Tantra help her? How can Tantra help couples? And then it goes into the seven golden keys of Tantra. And this is where you actually get an embodied experience of the four core elements. And then some of the more practical tools to take your own experience and journey deeper for yourself. And that's really a beautiful opening point to start to awaken these bodies within you and start to notice, you know, wow, how am I feeling right now? Where is my energy right now? Am I present with myself? What's my mind doing? Am I breathing? You know, all these simple things, but have such a profound impact on how we are as the beings that we are. And we take us, you know, as I said, into every area of life. So let's be the best versions of ourselves. That's definitely where I'd say. So start what, there. how do they get a hold of that? So just go to my website, um, which is just Ella Hall Coach. Dot com. That's Ella Hall, folks. It sounds like yeah. Hall. H for hotel, <laughs> A for apple, L for lima, L for lima, yeah. ellahallcoach.com. And they can find it there. And um, I'll give you a beautiful discount for your audience, especially today. Um, they can save 25% and that goes until this podcast is okay. Did <laughs> no you longer. say did you say Ella Hall coach.com? Yes. Not dot au either, right? No. Okay. Com. Yeah. Cause your mom's had a dot au on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. And, um, we're going to have all that in the show notes folks and the full description of it for you. So you can see all the stuff that's included. And, um, uh, we've got to take a brief sponsor break. When we come back, we'll ask Ella, what's a typical day look like for her now that, uh, COVID has hit and how she stays motivated. And I, and I kept thinking when she's talked about somebody had a trophy wife, I, uh, the old joke is, is this guy had a trophy wife, but apparently she didn't win first prize. <laughs> so, so, uh. fo so folks, uh, about 20 years ago, I turned the internet marketing world on its head in that guys like me and girls like me were charging 50 or or $100,000 up front to teach you what we know. And I knew a lot of these people and their ripoffs and uh, wouldn't even help you if you gave them 50,000, you'd be chasing them around Mexico to try to you know, get something out of them. So I said, that's not right. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, charge an entry fee that's reasonable. And then my success is tied to your success. So for me to get my 50,000, you have to net 200,000. Well, people just love this. And 20 years later and 1700 plus students later, they, <laughs> it's still going strong. And it's, uh, I, I say, and I've never been challenged on this. I, I boldly say it's the longest running most successful, most uh, unique program of its kind in the world in the field of internet marketing and digital marketing. And how do I uh, you know, say that? Well, number one, it's all one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, guys at my level won't even talk to you, let alone uh, teach you something. So me and my entire staff uh, only work with you one-on-one -on -one because if, if it's group, the advanced people are bored when I'm talking to a beginner and the beginners are lost when I'm talking to an advanced person. I, that's just no good. I'm not going to do that. Uh, also, you have an immersion weekend where you actually stay in the house with me for an immersion weekend as part of your year-long program. The, the part about my success tied to yours, nobody else will do that. They want all the money and they could care less if you're successful. We also have a TV studio next door that uh, you shoot all kinds of videos for you and our video people edit them, give you all kinds of marketing videos. It's all included in the deal. And uh, also, if you heard about my school in the beginning section, 
you get a scholarship to my school that you can gift or use for extra training for yourself. A lot of people gift it to somebody and just changes their life because they now have a marketable skill that's in high demand anywhere you go in the world. So, so check it out. This is my mentor program, Great Internet Marketing Training. Dot com that said it's the it's been running over 20 years and I've been selling online 26 years since the commercial internet started long past when Ella was born that's for sure so check it out and uh, now let's get back to the main event Ella Hall is here she's a leading transformation success coach and pleasure power expert so what's a typical day look like for you Ella uh, now that the COVID's going on well yeah, it's totally transformed and it's been, you know, not the most comfortable process for me. I've had to do a lot of my own practices and that's the beauty. I do teach my own medicine. Mm -hmm. So there's not one thing that I tell anyone to do that I don't do and live on a daily basis. Um, and so, you know, I am, I'm revolutionizing my business and the way I do things. So everything is coming online. Um, but it's really exciting and, you know, it's required me to have to surrender and trust and start to delegate more and really stop working so much in the business, but on the business, but every day is inspiring. Every day is challenging. Every day I'm learning and growing and that feels really, really awesome. Well, a lot of people that are stuck at home probably need you even more than ever. Yeah, it's They're true. They're going through that's, emotional crises and... Uh, that's it. I didn't uh, slow down, but I've had to... Um, just become a lot more discerning at the moment with how many one-on-one -on -one clients I'm serving. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wanting to create more content online to serve many who might not as well, you know, who've been financially impacted and might not as well be able to afford me right now. So that's been an interesting um, process as well, because I really believe that the, this universe we live in is, is an abundant one. So I always look for the opportunities in every experience. So everything's a gift to me, even the most challenging, heinous, horrible, seemingly horrible experiences are just ways and opportunities for us to learn and grow and step up and be the best versions of ourselves that we can be. COVID's no different. Beautiful. So, so give us a picture of though, in a day, do you get up early? Do you have a morning routine? Uh, well, you know. during at the, at the start of COVID, I, I, invested in a little pussycat called Ra. And so my morning ritual had to change. <laughs> <laughs> He's like my son. <laughs> so he wakes me up in the morning and, um, you know, I, I, being a holistic person, um, I know how important it is to value physical health. So first thing I do is go training, uh, whether that's a walk outside, you know, I eat clean um, to the best of my ability. Uh, you and do what? eat clean oh eat to clean. the best of okay. my ability mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay um you know i've got a partner so i also have to make sure that we can spend some quality time together as well and so it really is every day is different at the moment but um as i said like it's like i'm either serving a client online i'm building something like an offering for more of a group session like it's just it's it's so exciting right now like there's just the only kind of trap can be getting stuck in my own head and in my own way and becoming overly busy because that I am the epitome of the busy woman, you know? <laughs> so it's very easy for me to get caught up in the whole, the egoic stuff and the whole, Oh my God, you know, and I'm not good enough and blah, 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 all those stories and the, the crap that our heads will tell us the stories that our heads will tell us. And, you know, so it's a real matter of me having to find that harmony within myself of like, when do I actually need to have a rest now? Because I could work and work and work. Yeah, that's why I, I would too, never yeah. sleep. If I didn't have to sleep and eat, I, I probably wouldn't. I just, <laughs> I love what I do. I do what I love and I, it feeds me. But if I'm not careful, it can also deplete me. So it's a really interesting time of my life because COVID has forced me to practice, practice rest like I've never practiced it before um, and shift my whole mindset and methodology to the way I'm doing everything. So as I said to you, I, I'm finding it, really creatively uplifting and also at times very challenging, but I'm learning and growing every day, but there's no stereotypical day. All right. I mean? So, so before we go, I want to ask you one more question about the audio series. Uh, is this something that people work on by themselves or could they work on it with a partner or, or what? Absolutely. Both, you know, either way is either way will be okay. Right? 
Absolutely. Well, the first session I do with anyone is called a sovereignty alignment session. And this is about bringing you back to yourself, yourself and no one but yourself. So any people that come to work with me as a couple, the first thing I say is I need a session with him. I need a session with her because you are not a couple. You are yourselves first and you bring all of you into that relationship. So let's make sure that, you know, everyone's taking full responsibility for themselves. Like another thing that stops people from starting work like this is like, oh, I don't have a partner. I call BS on that too. This is the best time. When I started to learn Tantra, I didn't have a partner. I had to fall in love with myself. I had to learn what turned me on. I had to learn how to fill myself up and channel my own sexual, sensual life force energy, that creative energy, you know? And that's, we had a little chat before we jumped on this, Tom. And I know you said, you know, I spoke to your mum about, you know, orgasms, how long do they typically last? And (laughs) I remember when I first had my first tantric orgasmic experience it's what's called a kundalini awakening you can imagine that every cell in your body is having an orgasm simultaneously and that lasted for a few days do you know what i mean kundalini yeah kundalini so it's like i would say that's more like a houdini uh, <laughs> the, well, the it, fact it's that it totally could possibly possible. happen <laughs> it's totally possible for men and women and people to experience it together that's the most beautiful thing about tantra because as, as you were saying does it involve touch does it involve energy it's all of it it can be parts of it or all of it and when two people come together and they are totally present and his heart is connected to his sex and her sex is connected to her heart and they're meeting connecting in from sex to heart heart to sex they create what's called the fifth element and those states those orgasmic states where you don't know where you begin and where you end you know like people say sounds like drugs and i'm like yeah who needs the drugs when <laughs> we are the drugs we are it we can we can access these states anytime i'm just you know, worried I'm just worried, Ella, that if I had one of these all day, two day, three day orgasms, they would throw me out when I went to the grocery store. Yeah, but you're thinking of it like (laughs) you're going to be ejaculating for 48 hours. It's not that kind of explosion. It's an implosion. So just I can still go to the grocery store and they wouldn't notice. No, but you'd be radiating this beautiful, clear, joyful connected you'd be so grounded and so connected and uplifted all at once it's just the most insane thing it's, it's a state of being not a explosive thing you, you, you're so right i gotta when, take the blinders off because yeah it's hard, this is hard to understand <laughs> you know it really is uh, no it is yeah. especially when you're coming at it from that kind of logical mindset right right you need to have an open mind and open heart for this but still it's very practical it's not hard but it's not, it's, it's simple, but it's not easy or everyone will be doing it. And that's why I say start with the audios because they're going to break it down. They're what I call Baden proof. Baden is my partner. So my partner is extremely, he's like you. He owns a massive business. He's like a, a groover and shaker. Of course, I had to call in someone that was way more masculine <laughs> than me so he can hold space so I can soften into my feminine, you know, because uh-huh. I used to find that I was intimidating to a lot of men because, you know, I'm a woman who's powerful. I know what I want. I mentioned you know, that to your mother about about that. She was talking about the ways that the guys aren't stepping up. And I said that could be one of the reasons because there's so many more successful women now. Well, also that the thing is, though, they're coming at life in that masculine energy. So they're like me. They're the busy woman. They're, they're stuck in their head. And what happens, they grow this giant energetic cock and it becomes, <laughs> there's only room. <laughs> Sorry, Tom, I'm going to be really frank, but there's only room for in a relationship, one cock at a time when it comes to a man and a woman energy. You know what I mean? When when she's wearing the, the cock, either he has to be deflated and go into his feminine, right? And then Bend there's over. going to be a sexual, yeah, well, like who wants, for me, if you're if you're if you can't hold me as a man and in, I don't let you have that beautiful, you know, cock in the relationship, <laughs> then I'm not going to want to fuck you. It's simple <laughs> as that. You know what I mean? And women have to learn how to soften. We need to understand the power of that feminine energy when we can hold ourselves with our own masculine. This is where it gets into that little bit more esoteric stuff. But well, I, I got to tell sense. you, it uh, it kind of reminds me of dog training. we have a we have a protection dog company and these Mm -hmm. dogs are alpha dogs they're called yeah and if you don't take control like they're not uh, the handler can't be weak because the dog somebody has to be in control 
And if mm -hmm. you don't take control of the dog, the dog's gonna say, well, I guess I got to do it. And then they, you just lose control of everything. So, so it's mm -hmm. very similar, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I kind of liken it to the lioness and the gazelle, mm -hmm. right? We have both within us, especially for women. This is much more in a, in a women's context for man might be, you know, a lion and a gazelle, but um, you know, one of them, the strength is the huntress, the creatrix. She's, she's going to get that. She's protector. You know, she actually provides for the tribe, right? The, the lioness. And then inside her, there's also this beautiful, soft lover of nature, joyful, bouncing around gazelle, who very often, if you're a busy woman getting shit done, you don't like that part of you as much because that's like the weak part, the, the slowing you down part the one that gets walked over part if they're not in balance, right? So mm -hmm. the lioness can sometimes beat up the gazelle. So it's really important that we come into that beautiful state and realize these are all just elements of our psyche and we can actually hold space as that present force and see the strength and weakness in all parts of us and integrate all of them. All are worthy, all have a voice. It's like, it's like honoring your inner child. We all have that too. Do you know what I mean? And to deny that there's going to be imbalances that come up in, in you, in your life, in your relationships. And that's what I really want to support people to do is, is realize you're more than your head. You've got this world within you to be explored. And when you can master that with a few simple tools, come back to your presence and intention, take control of your mind. Your mind is the rabid dog, right? And your heart and your sex are the, the king and the queen that are going to help bring that back into harmony. And from that place, you will achieve so much more in real true connection, integrity and joy. And then abundance will just flow in every area of your life. Wow. Give us that catchphrase again. Bedroom, the bedroom, boardroom, and beyond. To the boardroom <laughs> and beyond. <laughs> hey, how did, boy, this has been a, a unique week here at the Screw the Commute. <laughs> All right, so I got to tell you. Um, I'm so grateful to you, Tom. Thank you so much oh, for your it's my pleasure. How and do willingness people, to How do people explore. get a hold of you? Um, you can totally just go to my website, which is ellahallcoach.com. Okay. That's probably the best way. Um, I see people all over the world via Zoom online. Um, I'm so ready, willing and able to work with, you know, everyone in some way. And I just really trust that I've been of service and this has resonated with you in any way. You know, there's so much to be explored here. Don't let your head talk you out of it. If, if something in you is activating and going, oh, I'm curious, be a curious explorer and, and come and, and do your own due diligence, research it for yourself, have an embodied experience. You're awesome. That's just so like you. your mother's, just like your mother said. <laughs> <laughs> reflection beauty thank you so much all right so thanks so much for coming on taking the time give our best to baden and the pussycat and uh, <laughs> we will catch y'all on the next episode see you later